Hey, a lot of you know that even though I'm a hillbilly from the Appalachian region where West Virginia, Kentucky, and southeastern Ohio meet, that I lived for over a decade in Philly, and I still consider Philly my adopted hometown. Because of that, I regularly, regularly keep up on the news there, and I try to keep in touch with Philly life and conversations. In fact, it was my custom while in Philly to always listen to the local talk radio there local in Philadelphia. On my morning commutes, I'd always listen to 1210 WPHT there in Philly. And fortunately, I can still do that with modern technology. So I can still listen to uh, all the Philly morning radio there on the AM station, just as if I was commuting to work like like always before. At any rate, speaking about uh, Philadelphia and the news coming out of Philadelphia, over Christmas, there was a terrible fire in Philadelphia. I don't know if it was in the national news or not, but it was pretty bad. Uh, I got the news from the Philadelphia Inquirer. In Philly, there's a lot of these uh, row homes. And what they are, basically, they're just homes built wall to wall to wall, and they sometimes go entire city blocks. So it's sort of a wonder to me that the fire wasn't worse than it turned out to be and that it contained itself to just two homes. But it's possible that a child got a hold of a lighter early in the morning and ended up catching the family Christmas tree on fire. A five-year-old told Fairmount Fire Investigators a Christmas tree ignited as he played with a lighter. When first responders arrived at the three-story row house before sunrise, the boy had made it out of the building. He then told a neighbor and later a paramedic, a firefighter, and hospital staff how the fire had started and that his mother had died. Fire officials said 26 people had been occupying the 2,300 square foot building along North 23rd Street. 14 were listed as living in the four bedroom upper unit. Uh, the New York Post says that at least 13 people were killed, including seven kids. The mayor of Philadelphia called it one of the most tragic days in our city's history. Now here's what I wanted to talk to you about as it relates to the principles and laws that we regular, regularly discuss about emotional health. Remember when we've discussed how anything that happened in your childhood are things your parents are responsible for, not you? I'm sure a lot of people struggle to accept that that is true. Anything that happened in your childhood, even the things you did that you were told not to do, that was your parents' responsibility, not yours. Why? Because children aren't responsible for themselves. This means that uh, the parents are responsible for every mistake you make, everything you do, everything that happens to you. So it doesn't even have to be something you've done. If some thing bad happens to you that's your parents responsibility they are responsible for seeing ahead at the possibility of that happening to you and making sure that you avoid that happening to you because parents are responsible for their children it means the the parents are responsible for everything not just the good but for everything you know you get an A on your test at school that's great. Parents are very proud of that. They say, yeah, because of my parenting, I made sure he studied hard, did his homework, and he got that A. But the parents are also responsible for when you, uh, as a child, take your slingshot outside and, and bust out somebody's window. Your parents are responsible for both the good and the bad. Um, in a very practical sense for recovery, this means that you can and that you should with a completely clear conscience, fully unload absolutely every single weight of regret, shame, and think about this, that a lot of people, when they're talking about guilt, they're not really talking about guilt. They're talking about shame. So everything that you would mistakenly uh, identify as guilt, that you're really talking about shame, and anything that happened in your childhood that is shaming you or guilting you or filling you with regret, any of those things, any of these things that you've been carrying on your back, 
from all the years from before you, when you were a child all the way up into adulthood you can just simply let that go that's what that means it's not a weight you have to carry anymore because it's not a weight that was ever yours to carry in the first place the responsibility for none of those years or for any of those experiences ever belonged to you they always belong to your parents I bring this uh, Fairmount fire in Philadelphia up because it's a pretty good example to highlight the truthfulness of what I'm telling you. Remember, it was a five-year-old child who was playing with the lighter and caught the Christmas tree on fire. Let's say that this five-year-old child was the one who, by himself, picked up a lighter and started that fire. And let's say that his mother even told him, Tyrone, or you know whatever the kid's name is, Tyrone, don't you dare pick up that lighter and play with it. But let's say that he did it anyway. Who's responsible for the fire? Are the police and the mayor and the city of Philadelphia right now blaming this kid for starting that fire? Nobody with an ounce of understanding whatsoever about how responsibility and childhood work are blaming or looking at the kid as being the person responsible for that fire, I guarantee you. It's not the child who's responsible for the fire. Rather, it is the parent who left the lighter there in a place where the child could get to it. And in this case, that person, that that parent seems to be the mother who tragically was one of the people to die in the fire. It it is really tragic. Um, You know, me saying that she was responsible for the fire is not the same as me saying that she was a terrible person. I'm simply saying that she was responsible for the child who played with the lighter, caught the tree on fire, therefore she's responsible for the fire. Why is it that she's the one who's responsible for the deadly fire, even though she wasn't the one to personally pick up the lighter and light that Christmas tree on fire? Well, we already explained it, didn't we? Because she's the one responsible for the child, and her child was dependent on her for everything. Because she's responsible for her child, this means she's also responsible for everything the child does or doesn't do or that happens to the child she's responsible for everything related to her child anything involving her child she's ultimately responsible for my hope is that this child will grow up with a clean conscience and not carrying the weight of this experience on his back even though something he did resulted in a terrible tragedy I hope I really do hope that the people around him will help him to understand that it wasn't ever his responsibility to know better or to keep himself safe or to understand and guard against fire hazards and practice fire safety. It was his mother. His mother was the one responsible for all those things. And it was her failures that led led to this tragedy, not his. So again, if you're packing around the weight of things from childhood that are keeping you stuck in place and hating on yourself. It's time to accept that children aren't responsible for themselves. And all of the implications of what that truly means. And then to let your your young self off the hook. Truly forgive yourself for anything from your childhood. It's not being permissive. It's accepting and being and living harmoniously with the reality of the situation.